All right, so we are going to be looking at uh, the shell method of volume today. A very similar idea as to what you did yesterday. And I'll just show you, um, we'll take a look at one of the pictures. It'll make sense where it gets its name from, but that's where I want to start here is if you've got your graphing calculator, let's uh, take a look at the picture. So I'll try to make mine very similar here to the one that's uh, shown. So I got uh, x minus x cubed. And the window we're looking at is this one, negative 0.5 to 1.5. I'm just trying to match the one on the screen. It's fine as it is. Uh, and then we're going from negative 1.5 to 1. Okay, so roughly my picture looks like that. So if I wanted to transfer it onto here, it's going to kind of look like this. It's about as bad as it, I mean, I guess as good as it gets for my artistic skills anyways. So this time what we're doing is it says find the volume of a solid revolved when we, um, we take this piece and we revolve it around the y-axis. So here's the piece that I'm going to be revolving. Only this time we're going like this. Now, to show you where these disks would look, we'd have one here. And normally you might have thought, oh, okay, we're just going to spin this thing around. And it'd be a disk method type thing. But the problem is, the disk method, it has to be perpendicular to what you end up spinning. This is, however, parallel, because I'm spinning along here, and my uh, rectangles would be this way. So that's the technique we're going to use today, which is to spin it around a parallel axes rather than a perpendicular one and we'll talk strategy wise of like when it's better to go parallel when it's better to go perpendicular but let's just explore this technique now um, it's kind of like this is like the, the I guess we call it this the toilet paper roll method because it's gonna look like a toilet paper roll when you unwind it if I spin it around you're gonna get this you know Calculus textbooks are so proper, they call it a cylindrical shell. But anyway, it's the toilet paper roll algorithm. We're just trying to figure out what's the volume of this thing right here. That really bad drawing would make a 3D cylindrical shell. And same as we did last day, what we want to know is what's the area of this thing going to be? So if you take a cylindrical shell and you were to unravel it, now don't go home and do this tonight with your parents' rolls of toilet paper. I don't want angry phone calls. But uh, if you unroll it, you just get this rectangle. Can you guys name what the pieces are? So like, this would be my radius here and my height. What do you get for the dimensions of the rectangle? Yeah, height is still the same, but what do you get for the width? Yeah, 2 pi r. What's 2 pi r? Circumference, good. So that's 2 pi r h. That's what the shell method does. Each one of these things in here is 2 pi radius and height. All we have to figure out is what's the radius and height every time I draw a shell. So I'll show you here in this picture I've drawn there's my radius. If that's my shell, that's the radius. And that's my height right here. So can somebody give me, um, well, well, you could give me either. I, I have a feeling, though, you're probably going to want to pick the height. The height is the easier one here. What would height be as a function of x? Sorry? 
Uh, yeah, in this picture, it looks like 0 0.5, but in general, as a function of x? Yeah, x minus x cubed. You can see it touches right there on the curve. No matter where I draw that cylindrical shell, the height of it is going to be on the curve where it touches. What's the radius going to be? So my radius as a function of x? It's funny, the simple ones always throw people. Let's, dr let's draw another shell. Like, say I put it here. OK. How far is this radius? Just give me the number. What do you think this radius is? OK, let's say this one's 0.25. And this one here, I don't know, maybe 0 0.6. Right? What would it be in general? It's just the value of x, right? However far out you are, that's how far out you're spinning. So in this case, the radius function is just x. So if I wanted to explain what r and h mean in this picture, this is a function to determine the radius. And this one is a function to determine the height. So if I then add up all the areas of those shells, I would have the integral. And here I'm integrating from 0 all the way up to 1. And it's going to be 2 pi radius function times the height function dx. So I'd end up with, uh, let's see here, 2 pi x squared minus x to the 4 dx from 0 to 1. So x cubed over 3, take away x to the 5 over 5 from 0 to 1. OK, and I'm going to be lazy and, and leave that for uh, either you or your calculator to finish off. OK. Now, it's important. I mentioned it last day about paying attention to what things are with respect to, because that determines whether we're going to use perpendicular or parallel. Um, one clue for you is, if you can go either way, what's this equation in terms of? It gives you a y, but it's in terms of x. Yeah. So this is an equation in terms of x, or this equation is with respect to x. So if you were looking at this as a clue, you would like to use x if possible. So dx would be the you know, um, integral of choice, because you don't have to rearrange the equation. Otherwise, you'd have to solve it for x, rearrange and solve. So this way, you could just use dx as you're given. But the only way to do that is by doing it parallel. So we will talk about this concept a few more times here. It never sinks in the first time. But uh, this next question says, find the volume of a solid formed by revolving e to the negative x squared around the x axes um, for 0 to 1 and bounded by the y axis. So we need to get a picture of this. This is a freebie, by the way. It's, uh, I don't know, if, never mind. You guys, none of you are nearly as dorky as I am, so I won't even tell you where to get this. Is there a link on my website? Oh, I could put one, yeah. <laughs> OK, so here's the picture then. If I flip it, x in terms of y. And I'll even shrink it in to be more like the picture we have here. So negative 0 0.5 to uh, 1.5 and negative 0.5 to 1.5. OK, so there's this sort of funny looking shape that comes out of the curve. And I'm only interested from y equals 0 to 1. So I'll try and transfer it as best I can, but something like this. All right, A for effort, right? <laughs> OK, so it does more or less that shape. And all I'm interested in is the area from here to here. And it says I'm going to revolve it 
about the y, sorry, about the x axes. So like this. So here's my area. Okay. Now there's another reason why it's helpful for us to have another technique like the shell method. By the way, one of the uh, things to help you remember is parashell, as in parallel for the shell method. So whatever works. I didn't say it was going to be cool. I just said parashell can help you remember that it's the parallel one is the shell method. So if you looked at your options here, if you were to do the disk method, because you are going around the x-axis, right? If you were to do the disk method on this, you'd have to be spinning your disks like this. And there's a couple of things, you don't need to draw this one on just yet, but this is for comparison, because I want you to start thinking about the difference between your two techniques. And one of the problems with this is as I move from, from here along, I'm going to have two different integrals, because the area when I get to this point is just a rectangle. It no longer needs that function anymore. So there's just a rectangle here, right? So you just ha literally, you would just have a disk there. The other part would be a curve. So you'd actually have to split this into two integrals to do it that way. And that's, that's yuck. You don't want to have to do that. It's hard enough as it is. So if you were to look at it the other way and say, what if I do this going parallel to the x-axis? This is parallel to the x-axis. No matter where I draw a rectangle, it always relies on how far away it is from the y-axis. That never changes, you see? Wherever I draw it, it touches that curve. And that's a good thing because then when I rotate it, I don't have to do um, two different integrals. It's the same integral the whole time. The other good thing about doing the parallel one is if these are the bars that you'd like to use, this is dy that's going to become that really, really thin sliver. So that delta y goes to zero, which means you're doing a with respect to y question. And this is a with respect to y equation. So there's a lot of hints in there that help you see, OK, yeah, this would make a lot more sense to do it parallel than perpendicular. It is possible to do it perpendicular. It's probably, however, much harder to do so. OK, so if I'm doing it with the, sorry, the parallel version, the shell method, the volume is going to be 2 pi, my radius function of y, my height function of y dy, and it's nice, look, I even have my bounds in terms of y. So this one's just screaming for us to do it this way. OK, so let's talk about a cylindrical shell. It's always helpful to draw one. That's why I recommend you do before you go off on your own is you should at least draw one of these shells. And uh, oops, sorry. Um, let's see here, it's going to go like this. So you know, I'm I'm a, I, my artwork probably doesn't help you visualize this at all, but I'll I will pull up another applet for you again uh, to take a look at. Um, but there's one of my regions, and the reason you always want to draw one of your representative shells is that will help you figure out what is the radius, what is the height. Okay, so if you look at this picture, here's my disc, and that's the radius in my picture. Okay, and if I look at the shell here, that's the height of the shell. It's fallen over, right? But it's still a cylindrical shell. It just tipped over. So can somebody give me a radius or a height function? One of the two? That's correct. This value here that I just drew, wherever I go, that's just the value of y. If I go up to this one here, so if I'm on this shell, and I do the spin, its radius is going to go all the way up to there, which is a different value of y. So yes, you're correct. The radius function, just y. What's the height going to be of these shells? Yeah, it's this e to the negative y squared. All right, so what's our go-to technique here? Not just the go-to, but the only technique you have. Substitution. substitution, yeah. So we will substitute in. Not a bad spot for review. 
So let u equal negative y squared, du is negative 2y dy. So what I'm going to do is I'll take that 2 and I'll put it back inside. So I need a negative for both. Which means I'll have volume equals negative pi, the integral of e to the u du. And now my bounds are going to go from 0 to negative 1. So this will be negative pi e to the u evaluated from 0 to negative 1. Okay. Now in this one, again, I want you to compare them. So I'm going to let you guys discuss with your neighbors. But in order to be versatile, in order to make life simplest for you, you need to be able to compare them. If you don't understand why one would be more beneficial, how will you pick the most beneficial one? So that's what the point of this next question is, is for you to try graphing it, visualizing it, trying to find out what would make my life easiest here, the shell method or the disk method, and you should have a reason why it makes life easy. Okay, so talk to your neighbor and see which one you prefer. All right, let's see. Uh, I'm not really going to be looking for the technique so much from you in this question, but I am going to be hoping that someone will be able to at least give us some discussion about what's better or what they thought. And at this point, we still need to talk about it, so it's good to hear your thoughts, maybe even if you haven't sorted out if it's correct yet. Um, so here, we got a range that goes from negative a half to 1.5, and I'm going up to 2.5 by the look of it. And I've got y equals x squared plus 1. Oh, I'm sorry, hang on. And I got y equals 0, y, um, x equals 0, and x equals 1. So the region that I'm looking for is this one in here. Okay, so I'll go, maybe I'll sneak this, uh, sneak it in here so I can save you my artistic uh, torture. Okay, so... That's the picture I'm looking for in here, is this, this region that's bounded. So that's the first thing, is being able to visualize the area you need to rotate. And it says we're going to be doing it around the Y axis. Okay, so what we're going to do is make this rotation. So I always, before I do any question, I always draw the rotation on it. And then I try to picture for myself, what will this look like when I actually spin it? Anybody think of what it would look like? Like a what? A sink. A sink? Yeah, it would have a very thick uh, cement bottom attached to it. But yeah, it'd be like a bowl with a really thick bottom. Um, if you picture turning it, this part of the curve here would make the bowl. And then this chunk from here to here would just be a solid disc. But there'd be a hollow middle, right, when it gets turned? OK. So one of them is clearly, and I mean, obviously, I've had more practice, but I look at this. One of them is clearly a lot easier than the other. So what do you think? Anybody have a thought about this? Or maybe they notice what I notice? Shell method. Shell method. I agree. How come shell? Because if you were to do it the other way, you have to use the disk method and the method. Yeah. So if you haven't seen it yet, hopefully we're getting a little bit of a, a, a visualization of what's going on. If you were to go and use the disk method, that means you're going um, perpendicular, right? I think it's actually perpendicular. If you, yeah, that's what it was, parashell and perpendicular. But uh, if you go this way, it's the same thing all the way across. It doesn't matter where I go. It's always the same thing. And it goes all the way up to here. But then it changes. And I have to go like this with my, it doesn't actually, there's a hole here. So I just have this little disc there and this hole on the other side. So yeah, I would have a washer, right? There'd be a hole in the middle of it. So not only is it um, two different methods I'm using there, I'm also having to make it piecewise because there's two different volumes coming out of it. There's this one here. 
this would be my solid disc. It would look like a hockey puck when I spin that green cross hatching. The top one, however, would look like a satellite dish. Okay. Um, so if that was my only option, it's my only option. Um, the other reason that that one's not my favorite option is if I look at this, that bar, who is it with respect to? You're right, it's with respect to Y. This is the Y here. This is change in Y goes to zero, and I end up with DY. So instead of having that thick disc, I have a very, very thin, thin one. So this one is with respect to Y. However, my equation, my equation is with respect to X. So in that sense, again, it would be harder. I'd have to solve it. Could I do it? Yeah, Y minus 1 is X, and square root it. You have a plus or minus. But again, you're doing all this extra work. Like why? Like life's not simple for you if you pick this one. Okay? But if we were to go with the shell method, then what we're doing is if I draw one of these, it's parallel to the thing I'm rotating right here. But notice that wherever I draw that, it's the same height and same radius function wherever I go. So there's only going to be one integral for it. This is also a dx bar, and so is my equation with respect to x. So they line up nicely. means everything is set up in this question with the intention that you use the shell method. Okay. So let's try this out then on the shell method question. I'll try to do my, my best here to rotate it. If it rotates around like that, then the height is this piece here. Can anybody figure out what would be the height function? Yeah, it's just the parabola x squared plus 1. Now, what's the radius function? This is how far out I'm spinning it. What's that radius function? Yeah, it's just x. So my volume is going to be 2 pi, the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared plus x times x dx. So I can integrate that. That'll be x to the 4 over 4 plus x squared over 2 from 0 to 1. Okay, so you don't have to be good at this yet, but hands up just so I get a sense. Hands up if after the, you've looked at it, now you think you kind of understand why it would be much better to use the shell method here. Okay, yeah, we'll get there. It's okay even if you faked it just for my sense of, you know, it's okay. It does take some practice. We will practice this one. Um, before we go on to the next question here, um, I am going to show you that just because... There's not too many things that you think are cool in math class, right? Except me, right? <laughs> so here's the shell that gets spun around when this, this one was uh, moved. And I can show you the different shells. So the shells, no matter where I go, that's what they're going to look like. Okay. And if I wanted to revolve it, trying to visualize what this would look like, then this is what it's going to make when that figure is rotated around using the shell method. So you try to get that kind of in your, your mind when you're picturing what, what's happening because the more visual you are about it, the easier it's going to be for you to, to see. So let's see here. This time it's your choice. There will never be a question that I give you where I will say you must use this method of volume. You get to pick your method of volume, so you try it on this one. If you could pick any which method you wanted, which one will be, be easiest? Well, let's just say, can you do it correctly? You may not even pick the easiest one, but you still could pick the correct one. Oh, yes. All right, so just by show of hands, uh, how many people think that they would like to do this with the shell method? And how many people think they would like to do the disk method? Okay, so even those of you who did not vote, yes, the disk method was the one we were uh, going to be looking for here. What's the top? Uh, so it would be one, right, if I remember correctly? Yeah. So roughly you get something that should look like this. 
that. And when we rotate it about the x-axis, what's somebody give me a what's going to look like? A rugby ball, football. It's going to look like a bead. It's basically going to be sort of a an oval kind of. What else looks like that? A dinner roll. I don't know. Anyway, so the reason that that's a better choice, if you think about it, first of all, here's the parallel one. This would be parallel to my axes that I'm rotating it around. But this is a dy problem. The height here of that uh, is going to shrink. It's with respect to y. This equation here is with respect to x. So right away, I've got one strike against it. I'm willing to rearrange it if the integral is simpler. But in this case, it's not. So for example, if I try to figure out what it's going to be with respect to y, first I'd have to do this. I'd have 16y equals. 16 minus x squared, then 16 minus 16 equals negative x squared, then 16 minus 16 y square root is equal to x. And I would need both the plus and the minus because I'm taking it um, on both sides of the curve here and there. So here's what my radius, I'm not, I'm not suggesting, by the way, that you do the, this. I'm just showing you why it's a bad choice. So this radius function for y, that's not so bad. It's going to rotate around here. So my radius is just the value of y. My height function, this one here of the disk, that's going to be this curve minus this curve. So that's going to be the root of 16 minus 16y. Take away negative root 16 minus 16y. So that'll be 2 root 16 minus 16y. So I would have this integral. If I'm doing it with respect to y, it goes from 0 to 1. So 0 to 1, that would be radius is y. And my height function is 2 root 16 minus 16y. OK, that was the wrong way to go about it. Well, I shouldn't say that. That is correct. But that is not the friendliest way um, to do that. There is a nicer way to do it. Let's, let's go through the disk method here. If instead I went this way, That was, I wanted to do both so you could compare to see how much better it is by putting in this little bit of uh, you know, foresight. If I'm rotating a disk this time, there is no hole in there. It's not a washer. It's just a plain old disk. And that means I'm going to be integrating sorry, pi my radius function squared dx. And for x here, it goes from negative 4 to positive 4. And the radius here, how tall it is, is pi from negative 4 to 4 of 1 minus x squared over 16, all squared, dx. Well, we could put it in the calculator at this point, and in fact, I will just to show you that they are the same uh, number. But, and again, if you're looking at it, thinking about integration, my next step, if I had to integrate this, would be to expand it so I don't have to worry about that exponent. So I would go um, 1 minus, uh, let's see here, x squared over 8. And then if I square that, it would be plus x to the 4 over 256. So it's not a nice one to do by hand, but my point is it's just a polynomial at this point. We could actually do it if we were motivated to. So let me um, bring up the TI-83. So this function, if I'm integrating it, it's um, pi times 1 minus, I'm going to put the other one in here, which was x squared over 16, and then square it. 
And I need a window that goes from negative four to four because that's what we're, we would be doing. And remember, this is not the 3D version, so you're all gonna be disappointed, I'm sure. But uh, this is just going to be the regular Two D version, and I'm integrating this from negative four to four. So calculate the integral from negative four to four. So I end up with thirteen point four oh four. And let's take a look and just confirm if I did the other one it would be 2 pi times there's no don't it's it is in terms of y there but don't worry about it it's still this is the uh, shakespearean theorem of math a rose of any other name would smell just as sweet meaning you can use any letter you like it's the same thing Okay, so assuming I've entered that in my calculator correctly, and I believe I have, this time I only need to go from 0 to 1, but my picture's already got that. So I'll calculate the integral from 0 to 1. And look at that, 13.404. So you could have gone down either path to get there, but this one was much more involved. This would be your, you know, the one that we'd like to, to use. The disk method was better in this case. Okay, now I don't know why I chose to ruin the surprise here, but the shell method is clearly better than the disk method. So what I would like you to do is look at the picture, and before you go ahead and do this with shell method, I've already given you that information, I want you to talk to your neighbor about why you think it would be bad to use the disk method here. Okay, see if you can at least point out why the shell method would be uh, easier to do. So first thing, I'll, I'll pull up a good picture. So let me grab, not that one. So we've got, let's see here, negative a half to two and a half, and negative a half to three and a half. So my, my, my graphs I'm looking at are y equals x cubed plus x plus one, y equals, oops, did I put something in wrong? x cubed plus x plus one, that's better. Um, y equals 1, and x equals 2. Now, I think I'm off here. What am I off on? X also equals 1. Oh, x equals 1. Thank you. There. Okay. So I'll p paste this in just so I can save you the agony. Ooh. That was a neat trick. How did it? Oh. Edit. Copy. Monochrome. There. Okay. There's a pretty good picture. So the uh, area that I'm looking for again is this one in here. And I'm going to revolve it about the line x equals 2. So that's my starting point. Now, if you look at your alternatives, um, you have a, you do have the option of going with the disk method. If you did the disk method, it would look like this. That means you'd have, you'd actually have a washer because this is a hole, right? This isn't supposed to be in there. Now, the important thing when you look at those rectangles is which, what's this rectangle with respect to? Is this a DX or a DY rectangle? 
it's a dy rectangle because that rectangle would never be that thick. I only draw it that thick because you need to be able to see it. But what ha ends up happening, right, is these ends shrink to just about zero, right? And we get dy. It's shrinking with respect to y. So in this problem, it's dy if I did it a disk method. And I'm not sure how you'd separate that without a computer. <laughs> because you, you know, how are you going to move that y minus 1 equals x anyway I'm not, I'm not sure you can even separate that nicely so um, because we cannot turn this into a with respect to y function we only have one option that is to do it with respect to x this equation with respect to x so our bars that we draw are also going to be with respect to x and again, if I showed you one of the bars, there's no way it would ever be that thick. This is way too big. What happens is it shrinks, so I get an infinite amount of those shells. And what's it shrinking with respect to? The shrink happens with respect to x, and that is, in fact, what my equation's already set up for. So by default, my only choice is to use the shell method, but it's not so bad when I do. Um, if I'm looking at what I've got here, this is what it's going to... Oh, that's so, such a bad circle here. Let me... So much better. Anyway. <laughs> but I just need a circle so I can visualize what my radius is going to be. So here's my radius. And I can see my height there. So maybe I can come up with some of these functions now. I did see some of you guys had figured it out on your own. Um, well... How about the height? The height's one you should recognize by now. It's just the function here, right? It touches that function right at the top. So it's going to be x cubed plus x plus 1. But how do I know what the radius is going to be? Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. Um, that's a good, good point here. This one was a little trickier. There's two different changes you're making. Your height function has changed. Thank you for pointing it out. Um, actually, thank you for pointing it out well before I went all the way to the end of the question. Um, but this is the part that was cut off, right? It's not all the way up from the axes to the uh, function. It doesn't do that. It just does this part. So how much is being taken out? This height is 1. So we're taking out 1 here. So this would be x cubed plus x. The height of that... Um, shell is just x cubed plus x. Now what about the radius function? Yeah, 2 minus x is correct. Anybody see how you could explain that? Why is it 2 minus x? I'll be honest, sometimes I have an, some intuition what I think it is, and then I just test it with a few points. So, for example, if I was up here, what's the radius right there? 1. Okay, that's when x equals 1. So, 2 minus 1 is 1. Yes. Then I could go, say, to this one. Test it out here. This is when x equals 1 half. 2 minus 0.5. How far is it from here to there? It's also 1 and a half. So at some point, you're going to have to convince yourself, yes, I think I have the right function. But the way you can also do it is it's going to be the right side minus the left side. The right side here is 2. The left side is the value of x where your bar is. See this bar? Whatever value of x I'm on there, the distance between here and what I'm rotating is the bigger minus the smaller, the right side minus the left side. So in this case, 2 minus x. Same as when we figured out um, with the, the washer method, the big radius minus the small radius, the top minus the bottom. So this time we're going horizontally, so it's the right minus the left. So now I've got my functions. I can put this into my volume. It'll be 2 pi from, I'm doing this one with respect to x, and x goes from 0 to 1. So my radius is 2 minus x and 
x cubed plus x is my height. So this would be enough for me to integrate now. I, I should have the correct volume function. So I think I've mentioned it, but historically this is about a 50-50 shot, whether you get a calculator or not. So, uh, you know, what would you do if you didn't have your calculator? By hand is correct, but what would we do by hand? Expand, right? The first thing you'd want to do is expand it, and then you just have power rule, okay? Excellent. So uh, we are going to spend a little bit of time practicing this, so you can just relax for a little bit, but uh, that's the shell method.